Well, uh, we here we are overwhelmed. <laughs> <laughs> my wife gets up and has the microphone, and my stress level just like shot through the roof. <laughs> overwhelmed. Uh, so we've been uh, looking at this for the last couple of weeks, and I hope this has been uh, challenging and comforting to you both as you go through a different seasons and stages of life, of days, minutes, uh, hours. Um, so last week we talked about sometimes you have a bad day and it gets worse. And how do we respond to that, you know? Uh, do we respond uh, with kindness? Do we respond with patience? Uh, do we get angry or upset? So uh, I hope you had some good experiences uh, with that uh, last week. So this overwhelmed series is talking about the story of Daniel. Um, and uh, and well, there's a lot in here that even though it happened a long time ago, really directly, directly applies to us uh, right now. So Daniel was, uh, he was taken hostage, basically. He was given a new name. He was forced to learn a new language. Basically, a complete identity makeover is what happened to Daniel. Uh, and then, but he kept remembering God is in control. God is great. God is able. Uh, right? Uh, even when things got bad, and it got so bad, uh, where last week we talked about uh, the king wanted this dream interpreted, yet he would not tell anybody what the dream was. They had to know the dream. Otherwise, he was going to cut them into many pieces, is, is what it said. So they showed up at Daniel's door and said, interpret the dream or we'll cut you into many pieces. And he said, well, hold on a second. We can do that. You know, just chill out for a second. Uh, so that was his response to, to that bad day getting worse. So we're going to pick up that story in just a little bit right there. Uh, but we're going to talk about being stressed and overwhelmed and how that happens. You see, when we get stressed, friends, not only do we become angry, but we also tend to experience anxiety in the form of extremely irrational thoughts. Has that ever happened to me? I can't go into work, I'm going to get fired, right? I can't even talk to that person because they're going to, they're going to pull out a baseball bat and hit me upside the head. I mean, it, it, has, it has, right? It keeps you awake at night. Your, your brain starts running and it won't stop. That's what happens when we allow that, that gets into our head. You see, stress and anxiety most, come, most often come our way when we experience things that are unplanned or that we are unprepared for. So I had a, a sophomore student this week, just had a rough week because uh, she is a planner. And I'm not just talking about let's plan my day out. She's like, let's plan the next six months out. All right? And then once that plan is set, it's locked in and nothing can change. Well, I don't know if you know much about sophomore students. She's probably one in a million because <laughs> the others aren't planning that much at all. So kind of working with that whole dynamic, it was tough for her because uh, a lot of stuff was changing or unplanned and that uh, she struggled with it. All right, so um, let me ask you this question, my friends. How do you handle change? Does change like really stress you out? Uh, or, or are you okay with change? Um, it, so let's do this. We've got two fingers up here, right? Uh, this, this is the pointing finger here. That's the sad face. So, uh, and then the happy face is the middle finger. Um, how do you need a change? <laughs> Choose a finger, you know, if you want to share it. You, uh... <laughs> this is your chance right now. <laughs> this is it. So I'm, I'm going to give you one shot. How do you handle change, friends? Does change stress you out? Come on now, just raise your hands, not a finger. <laughs> raise your hands, right? Does uh, change stress you out? So some people do this, some people doesn't. So you know, and once we know that about ourselves, sometimes, I don't know about you, but if uh, you get hit with a lot of change, you just gotta step back for a second. Kind of process it, you know, and then get through it, and then you're good to go. Um, but you see, basically, there's no escaping it. We're going to go through times of stress in our lives. We're going to go through time. Uh, you know, we're not going to get stuck in it, but we will go through it. How do we handle it? How do we allow God to work in our lives during those times? Uh, it can be challenging, but can be comforting. And I think that's what we've been talking about these past several weeks. You see, we have to believe that God is holy. That is one of those flags you stick in your ground and you cling to in life. That God is holy. There's nothing else in this world that we can claim that to except for God. When you're stressed out, when you're overwhelmed, you got to take a step back and look at that flag. God is holy. You see, the word holy, that is the only word in the Bible 
that's used three consecutive times to describe the character of God. It's not, we don't hear grace, grace, grace. We don't hear love, 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 or mercy, mercy, mercy. The only word we're going to hear is holy, holy, holy. And could you sense it when we say holy, holy, holy? The more we're saying that, could you feel God right there with us? The character of God is holy. Holy means perfect. Holy means without sin. And holy is who God is. It's so easy to forget that. So easy, especially when we're stressed and overwhelmed. We, not only do we maybe just forget about God, but we just absolutely forget that God is holy. Psalm 136, 1 says, Give thanks to the Lord, for He is good. God is holy. We can bank on God's promises. People's promises will and may fail us, without a doubt. But we can believe and know that God's promises are true. Uh, it rained a ton this week, didn't it? I mean, inches. Uh, I didn't see any rainbows, but I love the rainbow. That's that reminder that God will, won't break his promise, right? God's promises are, are pure and true and all everlasting. Isaiah 41 10 says, Don't be afraid, for I am with you. Don't be discouraged, for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. I will hold you up with my victorious right hand. We don't have to be afraid. Because God is with us. Don't be discouraged. I will strengthen you and I will help you. Whatever you're going through, friends, God's right there. He's with you and He won't. That's His promise to strengthen you and to uphold you. God is holy. Control is the greatest illusion in the universe. We're trying to control everything. The sooner we learn that it doesn't happen, and we allow God to control the better we're off. Think about it. Did you control when you were born? Did you control who your parents, your siblings were? Uh, you know, think of so much stuff that we don't have any control over. God has control. When we stop fighting for control, we can finally surrender to the one who is in control. So we are challenged constantly every day about really control. Uh, who, is, who or what is getting our attention? What are we bowing down to? Right? We, we just sang here, holy is the Lord. We bow down and we worship you. Right? Now, us Americans have a little pride issue with bowing down. Right? We don't do it. We don't bow down. But when it comes to God and our, our Savior, we bow down and worship our Lord. Right? But there are other things constantly pulling for our attention. What are you bowing down to? Is it greed? Is it uh, so much time at work? What are you bowing down to? Is it bitterness? Bitterness? Is it anger? Uh, failing to forgive? Is that what uh, you're bowing down to? There's, you know, what is it? And is it causing you stress and overwhelming you? So this is where we pick it up and um, uh, back into the story of Daniel. Remembering that God is holy, uh, and Daniel was challenged to bow down to something other than God. That's where we're going to pick it up. You see, this all happened because King Nebuchadnezzar decided to build a statue of himself, one that was 90 feet tall, 9 feet wide, and made of solid gold. He built it. This king was a little bit off his rocker, and he said, this is it. This is what everybody in my kingdom is going to bow to. It's pretty simple. Bow to it or die. He said it just like that with a smile on his face. Bow to it or die. That's pretty much all it's going to be. Now, just knowing what we know about Daniel, this is going to be a struggle, isn't it? <laughs> this is going to be a battle as it comes to it. So you see, back in Babylon, everyone bowed down, except for Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. They refused to bow because they knew that God is good, God is holy, God was with them, and God was in control. Let's pick it up. Daniel chapter 3, verse 7. All right. At the sound of the musical instruments, all the people, whatever their race or nation or language, bowed to the ground and worshiped the gold statue that King Nebuchadnezzar had set up. But some of the astrologers went to the king and informed on the Jews. They said to the king, Long live the king. You issued a decree requiring all the people to bow down and worship the gold statue 
When they heard the sound of the horn, the flute, the zither, the lyre, the harp, the pipes, the other cool, other musical instruments, we had a good discussion this morning this, uh, about what was a zither. Do we have any zithers? Doris? I had one growing up. Did you know Daniel? <laughs> Just that. What is a zither? Let's see if we're if we're right. It's like an auto harp. Yeah. Like an auto harp. Yeah. With, with strings and yeah. Yeah. On your lap. All right. A zither. Okay, so that played. Then that decree also states that those who refuse to obey must be thrown into a blazing furnace. But there are some Jews, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, whom you have put in charge of the province of Babylon. They pay no attention to you, your majesty. They refer, refuse to serve your gods and do not worship the gold statue you have set up. All right, so that's what happened to this point. Um, well, what do you think the king's response is to this? Not good. Well put, not good. Nebuchadnezzar flew into a rage. He ordered that those three be brought before him, that they were brought in, and he said to them, Is it true that you refer, refuse to serve my gods or to worship the gold statue I have set up? I will give you one more chance to bow down and worship the statue I have made when you hear the sound of the musical instruments. But if you refuse, you will be thrown immediately into the blazing furnace. And then what God will be able to rescue you from my power? So the king was furious. Uh, he was trying to exercise every sort of power he had over those three to get them in line, right? The king pulled out all the stops. Fear, intimidation, and manipulation. All the weapons the enemy uses to bring stress and anxiety into our lives. Look at those three words, friends. Fear, intimidation, and manipulation. Think back to a time when one of those three, if not all three, crept into your lives, right? And just wreaked havoc. And just wreaked havoc. So that's the same thing we're dealing with right now. Now, I have a, a, a movie clip here that uh, I'm going to share with you. It's from the Avengers. Uh, so it's a, this whole good versus evil uh, fight scene. Um, and the Avengers are going up against a bunch of robots that they have to defeat in the... Uh, Kind of the same idea here where there's just a couple of them, but there's a whole lot of evil out there, okay? And uh, so this is one of those uh, climactic scenes where they get to, to fight each other. So um, uh, let's take a look at this and then we'll get back into the story of Daniel.
Larry. Nothing like a good Avengers clip to get you fired up, right? Uh, like good words evil. But uh, did you hear him? He said, this is exactly what we want. Me, all of us against all of you. All right, same situation here. And they could have said, you know what? You're right, you win. You're too powerful for us. We give up. If you focus on the voice of the enemy, you will be controlled by fear. But if you're focused on the voice of God, you will be controlled by faith. There is no middle ground. So there it is. Now we're going about to get ourselves into a pretty good situation with Daniel. Verse 3, uh, chapter 3, verse 16. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego replied, King, we do not need to defend ourselves before you. If we are thrown into the blazing furnace, the God whom we serve is able to save us. He will rescue us from your power, your majesty. Just threw it right back in his face, didn't he? But even if he doesn't, we want to make it clear to you that we will never serve your gods or worship the gold statue, statue you have set up. So not only did they throw it back, they said, it doesn't matter what happens, we win. That's basically what he was saying. Go for it, it doesn't matter. You see, they believed God would save them. And even if they didn't, even if God didn't, well, that's okay too. They knew that no matter what happened, God was going to use it for good. Even though they're on the brink of getting tossed into a fiery furnace, it was okay. They believed God. Nebuchadnezzar was so furious with those three that his face became distorted with rage. He commanded that the furnace be heated seven times hotter than usual. So he was upset. He was livid that they were not going to comply with his demands. And you might find yourself right at that very spot right now where you're just being challenged, maybe with your faith. You know that you're just not willing to bow down. And you're going to... Did you notice Jennifer stomped her foot up here a little bit ago? Did you see that? She was, she was playing that movie. It might be time to stomp your foot, right? Even though that furnace is firing up. Because, you see, there's a popular opinion out there. that if I say all the right things or do the right things, my life will get easier. This story of Daniel proves that absolutely not true. <laughs> right? They did everything right. They uh, followed God closely and worshipped Him. And where are they going to end up? In the furnace. Mm -hmm. That doesn't sound easy to me. Instead... Life might just get seven times hotter. It might be a relationship you're struggling with is going to get a little bit hotter. It might be your job is just going to get a little bit hotter. Something going on in your life is not going to get easier, but instead it's going to get a lot hotter. If that's happening to you, if that's where you feel you're at, you're in the story. It's not the end of the story. We've got to remember that. It's part of the story, it's not the end. Because we believe God is holy, God is able, God is great. Let's move on. The 20th verse. The king ordered some of the strongest men of his army to bind them and throw them into the blazing furnace. So they tied them up, threw them into the furnace, fully dressed in their pants, their turbans, their robes, and other garments. And because the king, in his anger, had demanded such a hot fire, the flames killed the soldiers as they threw the three men in. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, securely tied, fell into the roaring flames. You see, friends, they had done everything right, but God still allowed them to go into the furnace. It's part of the story. You can't forget that. This is just part of the story. I follow Toby Mack on Facebook, and he throws out these inspirational things every day. And in today's, check this out, it said this, trials are not a reason to give up. Your pain is not an excuse to quit. Be strong. You've got this. Keep going. What a powerful statement. That's saying God is great. God is with me all the time. God's working beside me, behind me, even way ahead of me, right? You might be in the furnace and you might feel that temperature starting to rise if you're not done yet. And don't give up. And friends, I hate to do this to you, but this story will be continued next week. Okay. You got a lot to chew on right there. You got a lot to chew on, right? So make sure you come back. We got to find out what happens. God's got his fingers all throughout this, right? And if that's where you are, please remember, 
that's the story, and you're right in the middle of it. You're not done with that. God's never done with that. Let's have a word for that. God, we thank you so much for bringing us together. Thank you for reminding us how holy you are, how awesome you are, how much we can depend on you and count on you. We're reminded how great you are and how able you are. All of those things we forget so easily. Now it's just rushing back to us. Now we remember, God, you are so awesome. And, and this furnace that we're in right now, it, this isn't the end. You're just about to do something pretty darn cool. We might have a great story this week. It might be next week, next month. But we know that you are awesome and great. God, you're going to see us through this. You're going to pull us through. You're going to push us through. You're going to keep us safe with whatever we're dealing with. And then when we're done, all the glory goes straight to you. God, thank you for working on our lives. Thank you for, for, for us just listening, being challenged, opening up our hearts, our ideas, our thoughts. And God, uh, we're just excited to see where you take us. Be with us this week, our hectic weeks, our calm weeks, whatever we do, you're with us. God use us to change our families and our friends, change us, change this world around us. In the name of Jesus we can pray. Amen.